There's 12 foot pounds, now 17. And again, 90 degrees. Front head is ready for the rocker box. Uh, we'll go on and remove the rear stock head and put on the CNC rear head. Okay, now that we've got the uh, rear head, rear CNC head installed and, and torqued, we're going to move on to installing the rocker box on the front head. So the first thing is, is of course, the gasket. Okay, and these beehive springs, uh, beehive being that they have a taper at the top in, in the shape of the, the spring. Um, the old dual spring versions were, were rather large at the top, and so you, when you put a performance spring uh, with a stock rocker box, you used to have to clearance inside here so that the springs didn't hit the rocker box. Well, the advantage of the beehive spring, one of the advantages is that you don't have to clearance the stock rocker boxes, so we don't have to be uh, concerned with that here. All right. Install these uh, four bolts. Four short ones and two long ones. I'm going to remove the old O-ring from the rocker box here because we have a new one supplied with the rocker box gasket kit. Clean some of this oil out of here and install a new O-ring. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is notice I didn't tighten these down because the rocker box can still move ever so slightly. Um, because I want to make sure that all these other holes line up and that the bolts start um, nicely. Because uh, once you get these tightened down, if it's shifted a little bit, the uh, bolt won't start nicely and it's, it's much easier to cross thread uh, a fastener when you don't have things loose and, and easily alignable. Okay, before we put the uh, rocker support in, uh, there's a couple of gaskets that we need to replace on it. Um, and they're underneath here in this breather cavity. Um, basically you have a, a top plate and uh, there's a gasket here in between underneath that plate. Then you have a reed valve uh, breather assembly. It has a little like scotch bright pad underneath it. And underneath there you have another gasket. So we're going to put a new gasket uh, in both locations and then we'll set this all back into place in the rocker box. Okay, we're going to put the uh, rocker support back in to the bottom rocker cover get all the bolts started in here and the beauty of adjustable push rods is that we don't have to have them in place right now because they collapse and can be installed after the rocker box is on so I got all these bolts started now I can start to uh, Tighten down the base first, and uh, then I'll work on the rocker support. The gaskets for this breather were included along with, so you get in a rocker cover gasket set, you get the base gasket, you get the breather, the two breather gaskets, you get that O ring underneath there, and then of course you get the uh, top cover, rocker cover gasket as well for the front and the rear cylinder. Okay, I'm going to torque these bottom bolts, 5 16 fastener to the spec.
Okay, the base bolts are tight. Now I can go on to the rocker support. Okay, now that the rocker support is torqued, um, we're going to put on the rocker cover. Since the stock um, valves are not in this uh, assembly, that the rocker cover will need to be clearance checked. Because the valves, of course, are bigger, we had to sink them uh, farther in the head. So that, that means that this rocker arm is actually rotated higher in the rocker cover. So what can happen um, is uh, there's, a, there's a rib inside the rocker cover that, that should be clearanced to, to ensure that the rocker arms do not hit the rocker cover. To check the clearance of the rocker arm to the rocker cover here, uh, to make sure we have enough, I put a piece of mo uh, modeling clay in here and I'm gonna set the cover on there without the gasket and we'll see how close the rocker arm is to the casting, okay? I'm just using my fingers to kind of center the cover on the, the base and lift it back off. Okay, now you can see where the, the rocker arm is, is getting really thin to the clay. Uh, what you can do is just take a razor blade and cut the, the half of the clay off and you can see how thick or thin the clay is uh, to the casting. This one here we had 60 to 70 thousandths. Um, we maybe didn't have to clearance it, but uh, we did just to be safe. Um, but for sure, it's something that uh, you need to be aware of when you're assembling uh, a, an engine like this with a performance part. And depending on the combination of parts, of course, that clearance can be less or more. All right, this gasket has to go a certain direction. As you can see, over here there is like a indent in the pattern, whereas this side is straight. So make sure you have the gasket on the right way. Um, I have my clearancing in my cover. Uh, mainly the clearancing that we just went through showed you the clay, the before and the after. The rocker arms clearance is, is generally the intake is always closer than the exhaust. So on this one I didn't necessarily have to do the exhaust. I could see that it was way lower. Um, certainly not a bad idea. The, the time when you're really going to run into trouble of course is any time a valve has been sunk, uh, which in this case that has happened. But uh, if you were to, re to go with the 650 lift, um, combination and, and uh, put in an aftermarket rocker arm, anything over 585 lift we, we recommend a roller rocker uh, to reduce the friction at the valve stem interface. So when you go to that roller rocker or aftermarket arm it may be a beefier component than the stock rocker arm and of course interfere with the cover even more severe. So the last thing here in the rocker box is these top bolts. Of course, make sure you got your lock tight. You want to definitely start all of these, if not get them all snug, um, because this, the, the nature or geometry of this part is, is such that it has this slanted cover. So the second you tighten one of these down, the slant wants to make the the part move that way and so when you tighten one of them uh, consequently every one of these bolts gets the cover thrusted against it so it makes them hard to turn in. So just kind of get them all drilled down as, as close as you can and then go ahead and go through the torque sequence. Um, start in the middle, work your way out and torque them up. 